Hey y'all, welcome back. Welcome to day five, week two of our at-home bodyweight program. It's Natalie Higby here. Christian Placencia. And we thank you so much for joining us. Today we have an awesome workout for you. It's going to be a lower body endurance training workout. Our skill work for today is actually based around building some ankle strength, which is super important and no matter if you are just an everyday person or if you're an athlete. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to say real quick here, for the first couple of weeks of this program, we're spending a lot of time working on things that might seem maybe boring or maybe like when, when are our decelerations, they aren't very cool, they're not very fun, but they are things that are going to help us stay healthy for a long period of time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. So let's get into the warm up. One of the most important parts. Today we're going to start by actually getting the heart rate up and then we'll grab our basketball. We'll go through some fun drills. So we'll start with our high knees, our butt kicks, and our Frankenstein kicks that we've been getting into. These will be 30 seconds each. Let's go here in three, two, one. Here we go. So again, you could maybe start light here. You could even just start with some marches. And as you feel comfortable, start to get that little bounce, a little pep in your step, and then start to bring those knees up and get those arms moving. Keep that breath alive. That's halfway. Hopefully you guys are feeling good today, ready for a good lower body workout. Yeah, just kind of taking this time to check in with how your body is feeling and how your energy is today. So, three, two, one, excellent job. Pause for a second, let's go butt kicks in three, two, one, here we go. So again, I might just start by stepping. And then if I feel good, I can start to go a little bit quicker. Oh yeah. Whew, man. There we go. I don't know about you guys, but obviously we've been doing this program with y'all. And man, I'm feeling sore. <laughs> but as a little bit of surprise, the next two weeks of this first month, we're gonna switch up our workouts. So this will be the last time we do an EDT style, right? Before we start to make things a little bit more interesting. Three, two, one, relax. All right, Frankenstein kicks, 30 seconds here. Three, two, one. So again, I might start low. First couple kicks, just kind of check in and then start to really kick high as I feel good. Again, opposite hand to toe. Just like Christian mentioned, we've been doing some stuff the first couple weeks to build a solid foundation, which is extremely important, right? Making sure that we've got proper movement, we understand our body, and then as we progress, you'll see us throw in a lot more activities and exercises and just things that will challenge you and keep it really fun. So. Thank you guys for following along so far. Hopefully you're feeling stronger, feeling better right yep. now. Yep. Five more seconds. Three, two, one. Awesome job. Okay, now we're going to grab a basketball. Again, any object works or your imagination. You'll see one of us will have a ball, one of us will be going body weight, we'll be passing it back and forth. So if you have a partner, even better. If not, again, just Imagine that you're working with someone, okay? Yeah. So we're gonna go facing one another with our feet wide, moving through some lateral lunges and getting the upper body involved here. What we'll do is we'll lunge to one side. Now as Christian lunges, do that one more time, beautiful. He's going to keep the ball behind his head. I'm going to lunge with him though, with just my body weight and hands behind my head. So we'll go again. And then pass, beautiful. Now my turn. And pass, good. Now as we're doing this, we're trying to keep our heels flat. Yes, again. Really working to keep the eyes and the chest up and then see how far back you can get that ball behind your head though. Nice, good job. Awesome work, man. Good, stay moving, good job, stay breathing. Man. You guys can work at whatever pace feels good for you. You can keep our pace right here. You could go a little slower. No need to rush right now. Again, we're just getting warm. We're easing into it. Good job. We'll go last one here for fit. One. Boom. Perfect. One more time for me. Awesome. Nice. Great job. Good work. Okay, next up, we have a squat and a press. So I'm going to grab my ball. Okay. We'll do these together. We'll go 10 reps here. We're going to bring the ball down to the floor as we squat. Still keeping our eyes and our chest proud though. So just pulling the shoulders back as we come up. We're going to come all the way up with a press onto the toes. Now, you could go really slow. You could also go faster and work on that hip extension if you want to. Okay? Ready? Getting 10 reps here. Three, 
two, one. Down, up, good, one. Two, really drive that ball towards the ceiling. There you go, good, come onto those toes. Good. Get a little taller, you got it. Couple more. <laughs> Find that balance. Yeah. There you go, last one. Good job, awesome. Okay, next up, we have a lunge with a pass. Now, this is gonna be a little cross body pass. This one takes a little more coordination, all right? So what we're going to do is just go side by side with our partner. We'll lunge forwards. If I'm going with my right leg, I'll bring the ball to the right side of my body. And as I come back up, I'm going to laterally toss the ball to Christian. Now you'll notice, as he catches it, he's catching it as he's starting to go into his lunge. That's the goal here. And then passing as we push back. Yeah. Kind of think about in basketball. Maybe some of your coaches have said when the ball is in the air, your feet are in the air. As the ball is in the air, I'm stepping my leg forward into my lunge. So we're not waiting for the ball to come to us. We're preparing our body as the ball is in the air. Beautiful. I'm going to get my last one right here. And last one for me. Before we go ahead and just switch up sides. Again, just like Natalie said, our outside foot is stepping up. We'll do 10 reps on each side here. Here we go. So stepping, tossing. Good. And again, can you time this correctly? That's also a big key here. So it's watching the ball, it's paying attention to your partner's body movement, where they're at. And then it's also placing the ball in a good position for them to catch it. Nice work. All my point guards should know exactly what, the, <laughs> what Natalie's trying to say there, right? Set up our partner to be successful, putting the ball in a great position. Nice, good job, Nat. And that's exactly why we're doing this, y'all. Trying to correct our balance, trying to find a little bit more strength in these dynamic movements. Awesome. awesome. Last one for me. Perfect. Good. Good job. Then I'll grab my ball. All right, this next one, we're going with a forward lunge, forward lunge, and then around the belly. Okay. So I'll go slow here, real quick. Yeah. Gonna keep we're going to go with the left foot first. You'll see Christian goes to the inside of his body, to the outside here and then around the belly. Again, we're gonna go left leg forward for these first five, but we're still stepping with the right. Then we go around the belly. After we get five leading with the left leg, we'll get five leading with the right leg. So each time underneath both legs and then around the belly, okay? Ready, three, two, one, here we go. Step, step around the belly. Good, that's one. That's two. Now, again, you guys are in control of your pace. That's three. Four, nice. One more on the side, through the right, around the belly. Good. Oh, I'm gonna get one more extra <laughs> rep. And then we're gonna go with the right foot. A little overachiever here, I like it. Okay, ready, right foot forward, step, and then the left foot forward, step, and then around the belly. Now I'm switching that direction around my belly on this round as well. That's two, three, good work, that's four, last one right here, five, awesome, awesome. now we have one more drill, this one's really fun, it is just a little lateral hop here, a little lateral bound, single leg work, show them, beautiful, now as we go through these skiers, we're going to actually punch the ball down towards the ground at an angle in the direction that we're hopping, okay? So let's find our space, make sure we don't hit one another here. Again, you don't have to worry about going super far. No need, you don't need a ton of space. Again, we're just gonna hop, hop. Every time we hop, we punch that ball down. We're going 20 total, 10 on each leg. Ready? Two, three, four. As you guys are going through this here too, six, I'm gonna keep, or seven, Natalie's gonna keep moving. Eight, one thing to think about when y'all punch, we don't want our chest and everything to turn. You can see Natalie's chest and her spine is staying square. The punch is just trying to throw our balance off. So this right here is a little bit of chaos. Nice, Nat. How'd that feel? Awesome. I love that. Good. Awesome. Good work, y'all. Now, that right there is our warm-up. 
And that's going to lead us right into our skill workout of the day, okay? Now, again, just like Natalie prefaced in the very beginning, we're doing a lot of stuff right now for our ankles, how we decelerate, how we land. Because, again, those are usually the positions that people often don't talk about and they neglect, but then that's also where we get hurt. Parents, kids, coaches, everybody, us included. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our ankles in a very uncomfortable position so that if we ever do fold over them, our body's been there before. So instead of being out for months or a year, we might only be out for weeks, okay? Or not even be injured at all. Yeah. So I'm going to have myself, actually, I'm going to have Natalie grab a ball and do this first five reps on the first side with the ball, okay? What we're going to think about doing here, guys, is we're going to worry about our front foot. So I'm crossing one foot over the next. And I want to think about opening my front foot, open those toes wide and press that lateral portion. So the outside portion of your ankle, press it into the ground. We're going to let our knees go wide. Our back foot can help us keep balance as much as we like, but we're pressing our front foot into the ground before we come up tall. And then we're going to go five squats. We call them lateral ankle squats. We're going to go five squats here on this front foot. You can check out Natalie. Again, driving the outside portion of her ankle into the ground. You can see she's really playing here on the border of that ankle. And that's what we want. If this is super challenging, guys, I would highly recommend. Come to a desk, come to a wall, and use that for assistance. Once you get five on one ankle, then Natalie is going to go ahead and switch over to the next. And again, I'm going to show you how to get the next side here. You can see my back leg is just here on the ground for a little bit of balance, okay? This front foot is where I want to put all of my weight. I come down and then stand tall. Again, I'm letting the outside edge of my ankle press down, my knee go wide as I come up tall. You're probably going to feel this in the hip, maybe you're going to feel a little bit in the knee, and that's perfectly fine. If you're feeling extra tight, that's perfect. We want to explore these tight positions, okay? And again, whenever Natalie finishes up here, whenever you guys finish up with five reps, like squats with each foot in front, then let's go back to the start. We're going to go two rounds here. So one more round. Again, hyper-focused on the front leg here, okay? Natalie with the ball now, she might show you one rep where she puts the ball up overhead if she feels comfortable. Again, if you have a ball at home, great. If not, I can always just pretend like I have something out here in front of me. Or again, if this is very wobbly, very challenging for you, then use something, please. We're going to always emphasize that, guys. Just because you need something to help you with your balance does not mean that you're not good enough. That does not mean that you are inadequate. But what it means is that it's something new. It's something uncomfortable for your body. That's where we see growth. And for us, step one is always being able to feel things working. If we cannot feel the right areas working, then we're not going to get better. Last one here, again, on the lateral portion of your front foot, the inside edge of that ankle is pulling up, and then we come on top. Beautiful work, Natalie. I will say, for, uh -huh. the, for these, it's actually harder with my shoes on mm -hmm. than it is when I do these with my shoes off. So. Yep. You guys, you know, might play around with that a little bit, whether you have your shoes on or off. Totally. It's definitely an added challenge trying to work with my shoe here. So just taking my time. Beautiful. That was a great, great point, Natalie. Doing this one, we usually try this one in the gym without any shoes, okay? So if you feel like it's very wobbly because of the type of shoes you have, then just try it without, okay? Awesome work, man. Woo, awesome. Okay. Great job. So again, guys, we just got our little lateral ankle skill of the day. And I promise you, that is something that we do every single day. It's also something that we have our professional athletes do every single day. Again, just because our ankles are so important and we don't really want to twist them and injure them, right? Mm -hmm. Make them strong. Make really them like strong. Strength. Exactly. Now, let's get into the workout of the day. We got a lower body workout, okay? We got three different movements. We're going back to back to back as quick as we can to get the most rounds done. Now, if you finish up five rounds, you're at the rookie level. If you finish up seven rounds, you're at all-star. And if you have anything above nine rounds, you're working at an MVP level. We got to do our best to keep up with you, okay? Now, the first movement we have, and of course, we'll go through all these for a total of 12 minutes, okay? We're just going to demo them real quick, and then we'll start the timer, okay? Our single leg hinge to a reach. Now, Natalie's going to show you without any assistance. So this is level two right here. She's only got one foot on the ground, and she reaches out in front of her, 
as she loads up her hamstrings and her hip behind her. From there, she'll stand up tall. I'm going to have you show to the side real quick, Nat, so they can see. You can see, guys, as she presses back, her arms are extended. But look at her spine. It's a long line. There's no rounding of her spine anywhere, okay? Everyone's going to have different levels of tightness in their hamstring. So whenever you feel that tension, pause for a second and then come back up, mm -hmm. okay? Right there, everybody has eight reps on each leg. Just like we said with the lateral ankle squats, if that is challenging for your balance, please use a wall, use something that is going to help you feel it, and then as we get better, we can go without it, okay? Yeah. Now, the next thing we have is our single leg hip bridge. So Natalie's going to go onto the ground, and we only have one leg here on the ground today. So we'll keep, yep, exactly, the left leg down, and then the right leg will just lock straight out towards in front of us, okay? Now, from here, Natalie's going to use her back and her shoulders to press down into the ground, and then let's drive the hip on up, and then come back on down. Now, guys, when you're doing this here, don't just think about trying to shoot your hips up. You might use your lower back when you do that. When Natalie's doing this here, she's actually thinking about driving her knee forward towards me. Not to the point where her heel comes off the ground, but just so we can feel that stretch through our quad and the engagement of our hip. Everybody does 10 times on each leg. Now, the last thing we have here is going to be our single leg ball of the foot heel raises, okay? And I'll have Natalie just kind of use this in the very beginning, and then she can show you without. So remember, nothing wrong with using some assistance because we want to feel the areas working. Now, Natalie here is going to go onto her left foot. So the left foot, we're only working one foot at a time. She's going to go onto the ball of her foot. So that's not her tippy toes. If these are my tippy toes, the ball of my foot is where my foot and my toes connect. She's going to press that area into the ground as her heel comes up, and then she brings her heel back down. Now guys, as she's coming up and as she's going down, her hips are not coming up and down. Her hips and her knee are staying the same, and it's just my heel. So you can see, me working right here, right? There's nothing else moving. I'm not coming up with my chest. I'm not coming up with my hips. It's only a little rock onto the ball of your foot. Everybody does five reps on each side. Sound good right there, y'all? Awesome. Okay, let's start the timer. We got this for 12 minutes here today, y'all. First thing we got is our hinges. Eight times each side. Three, two, one, and here we go. Again, eight on each leg. I'm going to use my table right here for some assistance. But what I want you to notice is that I'm not using the table to like push me over and rotate. I still want to keep my shoulders square to the floor. Try to keep my hips square to the floor. Great job, Nat. I love mm -hmm. it. That's a great point, guys. We don't want to think about an airplane. We don't want to be twisting and turning. We just try to keep ourselves square, almost as if both of our feet were on the ground mm -hmm. doing this movement together, okay? Awesome job, Nat. Great job back at home. Again, this is a great day to really work on our strength right here, guys. Strength does not mean working with a lot of heavy weights. Strength means being able to control our body through a variety of ranges of motion, right? Strength is being able to limit the amount of little shakes, oops, and earthquakes, <laughs> right, as we are in a position. So if you feel yourself a little wobbly, perfect. Pause there for a second. Make sure your body can own that position before you come up and finish your rep. Everybody here has eight reps on each side. After that, you got 10 reps with your single leg shoulder bridge, guys. 10 reps here. And again, we're always going to move a little bit slower. You guys can be moving as fast as you guys like, okay? After single leg hinge, now we got the bridge. Great job, Natalie. Me too. I can feel this loosening up that front side of my hip and my quad is feeling a little tight. So I like these hip bridges because it not only works the back side, but it helps me just gain a little more space on the front side here. Job. Again, guys, once we finish up 10 here, then we have our single leg ball of the foot heel races. And again, Natalie's going to show you using assistance. I'm going to show you without. So I'm here on the ball of my foot. I come down. And remember, it's just a small lift, guys. We don't want everything to come up. It's just the lift within the heel. 
So everything else stays nice and steady, stays in place, as only my heel does the lifting. Whew. Now again, remember, okay, not onto your toes, only onto the ball of your foot. So don't go too much forward. That right there is just gonna hurt you, okay? Again, right where your toes and your foot connect, that space right there at the bottom of your foot, that's where you wanna be driving into. So it might even feel, when you're doing this drill, it might feel like you can come up higher. But if you come up higher onto your toes, then again, you're going onto your tippy toes. And we don't want that. We don't want our toes to be cramped and pushing like this. We want wide open toes using that ball of the foot. That was one round for me. Natalie's already working, okay? Again, you guys can move as quick as you guys can, okay? But of course, our number one prerequisite is always control. Never lose control. Believe it or not, guys, doing things a little bit slower actually help us become more powerful, right? They actually help us become more explosive on the court. Don't believe me? Well, then I would say maybe find some of our professional athletes and ask them yourself. They'll tell you that doing things slower sometimes gives you more explosion. It gives you access to more athleticism while you're on the court. I promise you guys that. Whew. I wish when I was a kid and I was a little bit younger that I would have had a coach to tell me that. I always thought as a young kid that if I was going to be better on the basketball court, I had to do more basketball reps. I had to do more crossovers. I had to get more shots up. And that's true. That's right. That's We are going to get better by putting in more practice reps. But we should also be willing to expose our body to these different ranges and make us work slow. Even though the game of basketball is a very fast sport, being able to move slow is definitely a prerequisite of becoming a better, well-rounded athlete. Yeah, I would say for any sport, no matter what sport you wanna go into, the one thing that is gonna set you apart from everyone else is your ability to control your own body, right? Just to have that coordination, to have balance. And so, whoops. All of these movements are extremely valuable when it comes to learning more about our body, getting stronger in different positions, and just being a better overall athlete, right? Here we go, keep moving here. Now we're gonna move a little bit quicker, okay? We're gonna be moving a little bit faster now. Again, you guys can always be moving a little bit quicker than what we're moving at. We just always gotta make sure that everyone understands the reps, and they understand what movement is coming up next. Awesome job. Remember, if you're finishing five reps, or sorry, five rounds today in this 12 minutes, then you're at the rookie level. If you're finishing up seven reps here, okay, then you're at the all-star. And if you're finishing anything above nine, then man, you're working at the MVP level. Now, I will say, being able to get to that MVP level in 12 minutes is pretty challenging. Just because some of these movements, more specifically this one, is such a slow movement, right? There's so much control. There's so much strength that goes into it. So don't be hard on yourself. If in the workouts in the past, you've done everything at MVP, and today you only get through about six or seven rounds, that's okay. As long as you felt like you were pushing yourself and challenging yourself, that is all that matters. And again, this is the last time that we're going to be focusing only upon three movements. Next week, the last the next couple weeks that we have for this month, we're going to be challenging everyone, giving you guys different movements, giving you guys different work sets, and we're going to make you guys work a little bit more. Again, our philosophy is to give you something that is going to get you better. The most minimal thing, what can we give you? A small amount of something to make you better. That is our goal, so that we don't just get better for a year, but we get better for years and years and almost a lifelong process, okay? Great job, Natalie. You too. Where are we at on time? We got about, uh, let's see here, about five minutes left here. So right. we're seven minutes down. We're past the halfway mark. If you haven't already, Feel free to pump up your pace a little bit more, guys. Everyone's doing awesome right now. Everyone's doing great. Whew. 
Perfect. And again, this one right here is so important. We don't just come up to our toes and extend our leg. We keep our knee bent and it's just a small lift into the ball of the foot. Woo. All right. Nice job. Two. Whew. Awesome work, Natalie. Great job, everybody. Great job back at home. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done here. It's so funny. We usually do a lot of our exercises and a lot of workouts without any shoes on. <laughs> now that we have to do these programs with our shoes on, it becomes so much more challenging. So maybe at some point in the future, we'll make everybody get into these exercises and these drills without any shoes on. Mm -hmm. And that will be a lot, a lot different. It'll be a whole different experience for your body. And I would say probably even be a little bit more challenging for real. Definitely. I think if you don't do it often, it's going to feel harder, right? Yep. For me, wearing uh, or not wearing shoes more okay. often than not, it actually feels easier. So shoes make it feel harder. So just getting us out of our comfort zone a little bit. I'm going to try to take my hands off the table this time. Add in this overhead reach, but keep that quality there. Ooh. Ooh. Great job, everybody. We're almost there, guys. Three minutes left, y'all. Three minutes left. Continue to breathe, continue to move. If you need some water, if you need a little breather, by all means, that's okay. Otherwise, if you're feeling good, like Christian mentioned, let's pick up the pace a little bit to finish it out here. Here we go, guys. Whew. This one is so much more challenging than what it looks like. Really trying to keep that same knee angle, keep the same hip angle, just coming up to the ball of our foot. Ooh. Here we go, guys. Hopefully by now, your hips are working, your glutes are working. And again, that's so important, especially for some of us that have knee issues already, especially for some of us who have a lot of knee pain or a lot of knee aches, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe they just feel their knees after long days of practice. It's super important. That's usually trying to tell you, hey, you're not using your hips. You're not using your glutes a lot. And eventually, that's not gonna be good for our knee. So that's why a lot of our exercises that we do really emphasize trying to take care of your hips and your glutes. They're so important to everything that we do. Most importantly, they're important to you staying healthy so that you don't have to stop playing so that you don't have to take time off right so that you don't have an injury and then it keeps you from playing for months that's the last thing that we want <sighs> guys we're almost there last 60 seconds last minute here here we go <sighs> job Nat. here we go <sighs> i think for me this is like round six I think oh I'm starting round six, and again, I was doing a lot of talking. I probably wasn't moving as fast as I could, so hopefully everybody back at home, you guys got the hang of it after the first couple rounds, and then now you guys are just moving here at your own pace, okay? Here we go. Job, Matt. About 30 seconds left, y'all. 30 seconds left. Almost there, about 20 seconds left. Here we go. Okay. Let's finish strong. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here we go, guys. Less than 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo. Awesome work. Great job, okay. Matt. Awesome, we're back at home. Again, guys, some workouts, our heart rate's gonna be up and we're gonna be super challenged. Other workouts aren't gonna feel like that, but that doesn't mean that this isn't a productive workout. It doesn't mean that we're not getting better. 
Again, so much of what we put out for you guys is to help you stay strong and healthy for years to come. Part of that is the decompression. So Natalie's going to take you through the decompression with the journal prompt, and then we'll be done for day five. Thank you five. so much. Appreciate that. And remember that we're looking to get you know better, faster, stronger, whatever it may be, for the long term, right? So as long as we stay consistent and we keep coming back to these workouts, I promise it will continue to pay off. So let's do a couple stretches here. What I want you to do is go down to the ground. And from this seated position with your feet flat, I want you to just allow your knees to fall to the side. So this is our shin box position. We're going into a tripod extension from here. So this back hand is on the floor. I'm going to push my knees into the floor as I bring my hips forward and I reach up towards the ceiling. Let's take three inhales, three exhales here, okay? Nice and slow. Really squeezing those glutes, drive those hips forward. Maybe reach back or down here, last breath. Awesome, and we'll switch up sides. And coming into the shin box extension, we'll reach up as we drive those knees into the floor and breathe. Again, maybe you're reaching back or down. Last two inhales and exhales. One more. Awesome. Then we're just going to finish out here. Coming onto your back. Feet are flat. And just let the knees fall to the right and the left. So you might feel the stretch here along the front side of the hip. And we're just gonna go back and forth for 10 reps and just slow breathing. This is four, five. Now if this feels good, you can always come back to this, okay? You can always do more reps, nothing wrong with that. Again, just giving you an idea of checking in with your body, making sure that we finish out here by slowing down our breath. Awesome job, y'all. Let's finish this out. You can slowly make your way on up, okay? Excellent work today. Now, let's finish with our journal prompt for the day. Again, one of our favorite things, okay? Today's journal prompt is all about play and fun. So I want you to think about what makes fitness or what makes your sport fun. It's important that we find that piece of fun in what we do all the time so that we can continue to, to improve and get better down the road, right? We don't wanna burn out and get bored. So it's important, again, to connect to what you think is fun. So again, whether that's general fitness or the sport that you play, specifically in this case, basketball, what makes it fun? Go ahead and think about that, jot it down and share it out. We'll see you guys tomorrow.